Hey everyone, this is Ross. In today's video, I want to talk to you guys about what to expect when you receive cuttings either from myself, maybe you, you bought them on Figvid, um, or maybe you're getting them from somebody else. What are some of the things that you guys should be expecting? What are some of the things that you guys should be doing for good housekeeping? Um, also, we're going to talk about storage, you know, um, how to properly store these things in the fridge to make sure that you have the longest shelf life possible for your cuttings. Um, all this is really in an effort to help you guys succeed this cutting season. So definitely recommend that a lot of you guys watch this. If you know anyone that is interested in starting cuttings this year and they're new at this, share this video with them. So I think the first thing that's going to be apparent to a lot of you guys is you're going to get cuttings of different sizes, different shapes. What I think is important is that you want at least three nodes on your cuttings. I mean, that's the standard. That's what a lot of people do. You want it to be about pencil thickness. The length can be pretty variable, but what's really important is that you're looking for cuttings with the most energy possible, the most energy available, usually from the highest point on the tree when they have these growth tips attached. Um, that's going to help you succeed the most when rooting these and also uh, using these for grafting you're going to have the most success. So usually the thicker wood, the thicker one-year-old growth probably has the most energy within. Um, again, cuttings from the higher points on the tree. I would say cuttings that are a bit thinner are going to be better for, for grafting purposes. And cuttings that are a bit thicker are going to be better for the rooting process. So it's really up to you. I, what I like to do is kind of include one of each, you know, one that's thinner, one that's thicker, so that you guys can kind of have your choice depending on the objectives uh, that you have. Um, when storing these, it's pretty simple. We're trying to have the appropriate level of moisture. Just like anything that we grow, the soil needs to be at the appropriate level of moisture. So do these cuttings. If there's too much moisture in nature, we start to get rot. If there's not enough moisture, things will dry out. So, finding that right moisture balance and it's really as simple as taking fresh cuttings and as simply as sticking them in two layers of plastic so what i like to do is i put them in this bread bag here this is one layer of plastic and i label that bread bag you can see the variety there it's called chater green and then i'll wrap this up sort of like so and then I'll throw it in another layer of plastic. This is a Ziploc bag. And what I like to do is I can even label this further and say, all right, well, this is all the cuttings, all the varieties I have in here that I'm gonna be rooting this year. Maybe I can separate this out and have different objectives like, all right, this is the bag for grafting. I mean, you can get as organized as you guys want. But wrap it up like this and stick this in the crisper drawer and you're gonna have the best storage conditions possible. You wanna have it in the crisper drawer because you wanna keep as much humidity in here as possible. You wanna trap the humidity in here, maybe even give this the second bag a little seal. And that way you're keeping all that humidity in the cutting trapped within the bags. You don't wanna have any, any paper or wet paper. You can have maybe let's say some sphagnum peat moss that's very lightly moist but overall, this is gonna be the best storage conditions that you can, uh, you can have here. Um, and if you do this correctly, you have the right quality cutting. These, these cuttings will store for up to a year in your fridge um, and still be good. In fact, funny story, I had, I had some cuttings that I, um, I shipped overseas and the, the customs in that person's country had caught it and held up the shipment and then actually uh, shipped it back to me. But it took them three months for them to ship it back to me. But when I got the cuttings back in the, in the mail, they were in really great condition. And they're not storing these things in the fridge. It's just the simple fact that we had the right moisture in the bags, in the plastic, enabling these cuttings to be at the most, the highest quality possible. Um, so storage is really important, guys. I'd also recommend that when you get the cuttings, here's what you should do. 
All right, so you're gonna have them in this bag that's labeled at the top here, shader green. Some people are gonna individually label them. I have maybe 500 to 1,000 cuttings that I'm gonna be taking this year. I don't have time to individually label every single cutting with a paint pen. I would really recommend that you guys do this for your own records, for good record keeping. I personally don't have an issue with the method that I use and that I label the bag. And I'm very care careful with my techniques, very careful with how I handle these cuttings so that when I'm rooting these or I'm grafting these, I'm not making a mistake and, and uh, mixing up the varieties. But for you guys, and it's just good practice, label the cuttings with a nice paint pen. You can get one from AC Moore for like a dollar um, that will last you an entire season. And that, that paint, that oil-based paint is gonna last for up to two years um, on the cutting. So it's definitely recommended. The next thing I would do before you label this is take them out of the bag, inspect the cutting real nicely, give it a nice little rub down. Sometimes we have leftover pieces here on the stem. Take off that leftover piece of the stem, clean this up. You know, maybe there's like some dead wood, which there shouldn't be, but maybe there's like some areas in here that you can really, you know, move around with your thumb, even use a brush and kind of lightly brush them. You don't want to take off the bark or anything, but kind of clean them up, get them nice and new, nice and fresh looking. Um, and also this is gonna help with pests. If there's maybe some scale on the cutting that maybe the grower didn't see, sometimes this happens, you know? People make mistakes and people don't have the sharpest eyes. What I would do after that is then put the, put the cuttings in a disinfecting solution. You could put them in a 10% a bleach solution. So 10% of that is bleach and 90% of it's water. And just put them in there for a short time, take them out, let them dry, and then label them. And then put them back in the bag, two layers of plastic, and you've got yourself the optimal storage conditions. A couple of things I wanna note about some of the cuttings even I just took. These are taken five days ago. Nothing's happened um, that's pretty significant, but if you look closely at some of these cuttings, you'll see that they almost look sort of, you could think to an untrained eye that they're, they're dried out. They have these ridges in them. And that's just normal, you know? And some people may look at this and say, all right, well, this looks dried out. But really what you're looking for is to do the scratch test. If you scratch the wood, you come in here with your thumb, if that's green, that's alive and that's healthy. So, you know, don't get too discouraged if you see some wood here for whatever reason, it looks dried out. That's not always telling the true story here. Um, Let's see, some other things I'd recommend is that don't go gung-ho trying to root these cuttings the second you get them. You know, if you look here at the bottom, I should take these guys back out. But if you look here at the bottom of the cutting, this was cut like five days ago. And this is still not calloused up. As you make new cuts, the wood is gonna appear differently and it's not gonna be calloused. If you let them sit in your fridge, for two to four weeks, they will continue that callus process. They'll also increase the dormancy process, which I think really helps these cuttings get off to a good start. Um, the callus process is really important because you won't form roots unless you get callus here on the bottom of the cutting. So yeah, you know, you can stick this in soil right away, uh, but if it's gonna be in a soil that's wet, and it's gonna be in a soil or an environment that's let's say 70 to 75, 80 degrees, this cutting is just gonna sit there in inoptimal conditions and it's gonna to start to rot. It's gonna to start to dry out, you know, either one. So why have that, you know, why have it in that environment when you can just stick it in the fridge, get it calloused up nice and neat, and then stick it in soil and it can immediately start to root. You know, it could immediately start that rooting process. So those are my big recommendations, guys. I really hope that a lot of you guys are happy uh, having a good, successful rooting season. This is the, you know, the objective of this video is to help you guys out in the best way that I can. Um, again, it's really all about the cutting, 
um, you know, having a good cutting to start off is really important. You're gonna have the best success with the right product from the beginning. Um, however, a lot of this really comes down to your processes, your environment, the, the techniques that you guys are using. So if you're interested and you wanna know really how to root these things to the best of your ability, because uh, a, a large part of it is really up to you from this point. You know, you receive the cuttings from this point onwards, assuming that they're healthy, they're, they're quality cuttings, it's really up to you at that point. I have a playlist that I created all last year. We took you guys every step of the way through the rooting process. I did like 12 or 15 videos. So I'll link that playlist uh, at the end of this video. And also it's gonna be in the listings of all my FigBid listings here, guys. We're gonna have this video here, a link to this, but also a list to that entire playlist. If you guys are interested in buying cuttings from me, everything is gonna be listed on FigBid. There's no reason to contact me individually. It's so much easier when I do it through FigBid um, for tax purposes, for record keeping purposes, uh, for just, you know, so many reasons. So I wanna thank you guys again for watching this one. We'll talk to you soon. Take care, everybody.